I don't think we have them in Europe. What do these guys do? <laughs> of course you don't have them in Europe. That's why you're all so confused over there. You need motivational speakers. No, they're just, uh, they're, they're flim flam artists. They're con men who, uh, here in America, they're on TV late at night and they sell tapes, videotapes and audio tapes of, that will help you change your life, change the person you are to someone else. If you're poor, you'll be rich. If you're unhappy in love, you will be very happy in love. And uh, if you have difficulty getting out of bed before noon, you will be up at the crack of dawn and just getting things done. You know? And these guys are very excited about the changes that they were able to make in their own lives. You see that? And you can too. We can change your life. And you'll love it. It's fun. It's exciting. And it's you. It's really you. And it's on in the middle of the night. And if you're awake in the middle of the night at 5 in the, in the morning, you think to yourself, well, gee, maybe, maybe I do need help. And, and so these guys sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of tapes and make lots and lots of money. And what they say is, I was poor, and now I'm a millionaire. Well, they're a millionaire from selling this idiotic tape to a bunch of people that are awake at 5 in the morning. It's, it's really not fair. So that's what I play as a uh, to be at the beginning of the movie. I'm peddling the story of my life, which was a, a, a kid who was told his father died before he was even born. So I fought my way through being a half orphan, you know, to make myself what I am, a guy with, you know, cufflinks, you know, and a tie. And, uh, and, and basically, I'm just trying to make somebody believe I know what I'm doing, you know, which is what these calls are up to. And, uh, it sort of falls apart. I go to my uh, engagement party. I'm reading congratulatory telegrams, and there's one that says, sorry to inform you of the death of your father. And there's a sizable inheritance. Could you please come and collect it? Well, I, since I was told my father died before I was born, this is quite a shock. And I go to collect the, uh, the inheritance, and it's uh, massive debt and an 8,000-pound elephant. That's what I am left with. And the information, the knowledge that my father was not like a hero, but it was a clown who died, you know, broke with an elephant. So I've got to sell this elephant, and in, in order to do that, I've got to transport it all the way across America in, a sh in, in five days, get it across America in order to sell it. We, we trail across country, and you see this elephant in a lot of places that elephants don't hang out in America, like in the desert and in the Navajo country in the west and crossing the Continental Divide. and moving through uh, freight train yards and wheat fields. It's a very, very beautiful, poetic, difficult journey. Well, you find out that this, uh, the elephant is responsible for freeing, up, freeing me up and helping me identify myself, telling me who I really am. Well, I've worked with um, Sigourney Weaver, Andy McDowell, you know, some, some great actresses, you know, Jessica Lange, but really this, uh, Tie is really the easiest one I've had to work with. Most professional, always on time, you know, not a problem with the makeup and hair always, and very forgiving. Really, that's the most important thing, very forgiving. And able to work long, long hours, you know, you know, you know, only eats a couple times a day. When she eats, she eats a lot, but you know, just always upbeat, always friendly, very in control of herself. She is. She upstages me the entire film. It's a. Uh, it's worse than working with uh, Jerry Lewis or Milton Berle. It's a terrifying thought to know that she's standing behind me and and the kinds of things she's doing with her trunk whenever I'm not looking. She's always on the move, and uh, you know, if I weren't if I weren't so forgiving, I just haul off and you know, don't pull that stuff on me, you know. But she's uh, she's always right on time. I. I know when it's, you can just sort of feel it. I guess I've done enough movies where, and so that I know when I walk in in the morning that it's supposed to be funny, I think. And it's always a, it's always a great shock to be wrong and to find out, oh my gosh, I'm playing this straight and it really should be funny. Because sometimes it's just written like automatically and it's, there it is and you look at it and then you think, well, there's nothing funny about this. Why don't I just try to make it funny? So. That's always the challenge, and that usually happens after about 40 minutes of looking at it and watching them figure out everything else is supposed to go on in the shot and say, well, okay, I can do it the way you want it, but why don't I try to do it funny instead? <laughs> <You know? laughs>
Although this is a good script, this is an exceptional script, and it's really good and has lots of stuff to it. But it's always a challenge to to make something funny where there was nothing, where there's just where there's just movement, where there's just storytelling or plot. If you can make that funny, then then it's a good day. Sometimes you'll have three or four scenes to do, and they'll read very dry. And you'll come in and you look at it and you go, you know, isn't there a, like a robot that does this stuff for me? Where where's the robot guy? So then you have to figure out how to do, be funny. So it, there's something inside me where, uh, that, where the rhythm just says, this isn't what it is, sh should be. This should be funny. And this is, any idiot can do this. So if you're going to do it, you may as well do something better. You know? it, starts, uh, it starts in my body. You know? It starts in my body. And uh, if I'm really literally sitting, or, you know, or you know, I can sort of feel my own weight in my feet, uh, I can, uh, then everything that happens I, I am much more aware of and the movement and the tempo of everything else I see much more clearly and I see how someone who observed the tempo of everything around could mess with it a little bit, you know, who could alter that rhythm and create something that's unexpected. That's sort of what makes you laugh. It's, it's sort of a yes and no coming together at the same time. So if you can see it all as it's supposed to go and then say, well, I can achieve all that and do something else by, by changing that rhythm, why don't I? Let's go. And then, so that's, that's why it's, it's fun. That's why I, <laughs> so some people like my movies, you know, or the directors do anyway, but because it, it's, it's always fun to find more there than is there. I mean, the writer always wants you, and you know, when I write too, if an actor will come and bring more than is there, you always feel like, you know, a good person, you know, and you've been rewarded that somebody gave it a little more. So it's, it's, sometimes when you look around, you see the scale of it, you know, you just see that's, it, it sits there and that, and if you can see the scale of it, like how big it is and how much effort everyone's putting into it and you get, you, you owe more, you know, you owe more. You have to give more. It's, something, it's like seeing the scale of the world. You see the world and you're in it. I, I should come up with a little something else, you know? I mean, they came up with the clouds and the sky and the earth and the trees and all the other people. I should maybe bring a little something to the party. I, I kind of get that feeling when I work. Uh, it works that uh, someone in Hollywood has an idea, you know? And there's only one good idea in Hollywood every you know, few years anyway. So if somebody has a good idea, wouldn't it be fun to be in an elephant movie, you know? And it, you know, it's, it's like dropping a piece of, a big morsel of food on an anthill. All the ants grab a little piece and run different directions. So that's what it's like. A good idea, someone has a good idea, all the studios grab a little piece and run different directions. So they all end up with something. You know, they all end up with a piece of, uh, you know, swordfish, you know. <laughs> but, but how they, how, you know, what they do with it, you know, is, determines how well the film does. So there's another elephant movie, and then there's another elephant movie, and then there's this elephant movie. This one, of course, is the finest elephant mo movie available on the market. And, and uh, when I spoke to the crew the first day, I said, I'd like this to be the best damn elephant movie ever made. And that's what we've set out to do, make it the, and that doesn't even have to be that good, but it just has to be the best damn elephant movie ever, ever made. So that's what we're shooting for. That's what we've been aiming for. Uh, and uh, the other elephant movies may come and go, but this is going to be the best damn elephant movie ever made.